Let's talk about Southern California, the home of mediocre films and annoying talk show hosts. That I've signed a new contract to carry on <laughs> hosting the Late Late Show. Well, but if you've ever spent some time there, you'll probably be aware that the area is sunny 99% of the time. And with all that sunshine, it means there isn't much rain, with LA having nearly half the amount of rainfall as London. So with folk needing water to survive and water their lawns, you know, the important stuff, relying on just the rain isn't going to cut it, meaning Southern California needs another source of water, and in this video, we'll tell you one of the ingenious ways that the area gets it. We're going back to a time long ago when Southern California would vote for Republican presidents and primarily get its water from the Colorado River. However, with the region's explosive growth after World War II, it meant that water from just the Colorado River wasn't going to cut it. Despite popular belief, California isn't as dry as you think, and the state has areas where annual rainfall is over three times more than London. However, it's mostly located in the northern regions of California. So with all that sweet H2O located within the wrong part of the state, plans would be in the pipeline to find a way to bring it down to serve all them thirsty Southern Californians. The solution led to the formation of the California State Water Project in 1960, with one of its notable proposals being the construction of an aqueduct over 400 miles long to transport water across the state from the wetter north to the drier south. The aqueduct starts in the Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta, which lies to the east of San Francisco, taking water from, you guessed it, the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers, where it's pumped to the Bethany Reservoir. From there, it begins its journey southwards by gravity, stopping by a series of reservoir and pumping stations along the way, before it hits a junction, splitting in two, with one leg carrying on down to Edmonston Pumping Plant, 70 miles to the north of Los Angeles, and the other, dubbed the Coastal Branch, which heads west to serve the coastal cities, including Santa Barbara. Once reaching the Edmonston pumping plant, the water needs to find its way over the Tehachapi Mountains to carry on its journey. But no sweat, the Edmonston is no ordinary pumping plant, it's in fact the most powerful water lifting system in the world. 14 80,000 horsepower pumps moves up to 2 million gallons of water per minute, 587 meters over the Tehachapi Mountains to carry on its journey. As you can imagine, these pumps guzzle up a lot of power, 787 megawatts, or roughly the same population as Anaheim, to keep them running. Once the water is pumped over the Tehachapi Mountains, the system splits in two again, creating west and eastern branches. The west branch moves water to a series of lakes in the mountains north of Los Angeles for the city to then use, whilst the eastern branch moves water to the east around Los Angeles to serve the inland cities of Southern California, such as San Bernardino and Riverside. So what are some of the technical specs, you ask? Well, the main section of the aqueduct from Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta to the Edmonston pumping plant is over 300 miles long, mainly comprising of concrete channels, but also includes 21 miles of tunnels and six dams, which generate an average of over 6,500 gigawatts of electricity annually. The aqueduct reaches a maximum width of 91 metres and a depth of 9 metres, so that's a lot of water. Construction on the first section of the system began in 1960, and by 1968, water had reached the San Joaquin Valley in the centre of the state, finally reaching Southern California by 1973. The final piece to be completed was the coastal branch in 1998, and the system cost over a whopping $17 billion to construct or one-fifth of a California high-speed rail, but that's a story for a different day. Since its completion, around 70% of the water provided is used by urban areas and industry in both Southern California and the San Francisco Bay Area, with the other 30% used for irrigation in the Central Valley, providing estimated benefits of $400 billion to the state's economy. Turns out water in lawns is big business, so did this system solve Southern California's water problems? The simple answer is... Oh, hell no! With the region experiencing frequent droughts over the past decades, and with lawns that need watering, the state will likely have to look for an alternative solution to get its water from. 
Hey, Penelope. You sure I'm doing this right? I think so. Uh-huh. Does it, uh, look anything like a real rain dance? 